come from? And the answer is this. And the truth is, and I'm a part of this, we actually don't realize it. We don't know where we've come from. Because if we did, we'd all be Brahmgyanis. We'd all be in that avastha where things won't phase us. Dukh, sukh, sorrow, happiness, joy, these things won't phase us. But the ultimate truth is that Guru Granth Sahib is the Jyot. And we're a part of that jyot. It's like a bigger ocean. You know, the waves come up, they come down. We, we are that wave. We are a part of that ocean with little droplets. And once we've realized this, what will happen? Where will we get to? What is our goal in life? Is our goal to just work? Or have kids? Or what, what is our goal? That's what we're looking for, is the ultimate. Because even when we think about that we want to be one with Vaigur, why do we want to do that? Because we want to be happy. Nobody is looking for sadness. You all and me, we're here because we want to experience what that is. <coughs> but how are we going to get there? Sukh dukh je parsa nahi lob mo abama. Kaho nanak sun so Murat Bhagwan. And we talked about this yesterday. And when I was looking at this present this slide yesterday, I was thinking about who is that person for me? What do I look at in my life? And a big turning point in my life was when I heard the story about Bhai Daru Singh, which was really later on in my journey. And when I heard the story, I, I couldn't stop crying. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Bhai, Bhai Daru Singh. And Bhai Daru Singh was born in Amritsar. And they had one sister, and they had their mother. And um, they lived in a small village in Amritsar. And they were imbued with Nam. They were in love with Vaiguru. They would sit up and meditate in the early hours of the morning. And their food was to serve the Sangat. So at that time, um, a lot of Sikhs were in jungles because of what was going on. And they used to, their mother, their mataji used to make prashad day, and then they used to go out and serve them in the jungles. But they used to do kulla. They, they, weren't, they weren't shy about it. They didn't hide away about it like we would now. Maybe somebody will come after me. There's none of that. They were fearless. They did it with pure and utter piyad, but they were fearless. And the emperor at the time, the king at the time, found out that this this man is doing this, and I need to stop him because, you know, he's feeding the the, the enemy. And he sent his guards to Bai Baru Singh's house to say, "Go and get him, bring him as a prisoner." So when they turned up at Bai Baru Singh's doorstep, they said, "We've been sent by our king. He's said for us to arrest you because you're basically feeding." the enemy, you're feeding the Sikhs. And his response to that was, well, if your king has sent you to come and arrest me, my king has told me that nobody can leave without food. So he fed the men that had come to arrest him. Think about this. Somebody has come to your house, and they're going to arrest you, and you quite well know that this is going to end not in the way that you would like, are you going to give them food? Or you, you're probably going to be, listen, ma'am, somebody has come and, you know, they're going to arrest me and bring the boys down or bring the girls down or let's <laughs> the police. That's what we would do. That's how we would play it. But nay, they were the embodiment of truth. And they fed them and then they went. And when the emperor said to them, eh, where do you get your strength from? Why are you so stern? In, in the way that you're talking to me? And the answer was, my case gives me my strength. I get my, my strength from my case. And eventually this emperor, he thought, what, what is up with you and your case? Fine, you love your case so much, we'll take your case off. We'll cut them and bows, bows over my dead body. 
you will not take my gaze off my body. And there's very different versions of this. I'm not going to go into what happened, how it happened, but eventually they had to scalp Bhai Daru Singh. He had his copper taken off because he wouldn't part from his gaze. How great is that? And us as women, and I'm saying this as a woman that has got lots of hair on my body, that for me that was my turning point because at that time I was still bleaching my facial hair and I was going through a whirlwind in my body thinking, am I doing BRBD? Do I remove it? What do I do? And, and there's various different people saying that if you're still bleaching it, it's wrong. And, and I was in that point of my life and I thought, you know what, we've got this great warrior here, spiritual warrior, who's not touched by um, um, pain and sorrow and emotional attachment. He could have easily have said, I've got a mother to look after. She's a widow. I've got a sister that needs mine off. I need to look after my family. But had he done that, I wouldn't be talking about him so many hundreds of years later. He was in this place, which is where we want to be. Going back to my, my, my journey with Bhai Daru Singh. And I thought at that point that, what am I doing? I am so attached to the way I look that I, I care about what people think, what my workplace is going to say, how I'm viewed within society. And I thought what's more important to me, is my guru more important? Ultimately, which is where I'm going to go? Because none of you lot are going to come with me. Or is it that I'm going to actually take that stride and say, Maya, you give me the strength. That's the choice that I took. And so many years later, I've got a really big beard. But I'm okay with that. I really am. But I'm not there where, he, where they were. But this is the ultimate. And this is what happiness looks like. Because if you really think about it, somebody dies, or if your husband leaves you, or if your mother is, mother in law is ghosting you, and she's so hard to live with, or if your sister's doing your head in, or if your daughter's crying every night, or whatever, whatever it may be that's going on in your life, if you're in this place, it's not going to bother you. And my husband always tells me, this is where you need to be when we have a little, you know, this is where you need to be. And I'm really thankful that I've got that type of partner, that type of sangat around me. And I'm thankful that I've got you lot as well, that I can look at and be inspired by. But this is what happiness looks like. Obviously, the obvious question, well, how do you reach there? We come to the Gurdwara, uh, we do something, we do give them, and then I feel it for that moment, and then and then it just goes. How do I get there? And then Maharaj says, Guru Dwara Hue Soji Paisi. So if you come to the Guru's do door, but what do you have to do? You have to become a beggar. It's when you suffer deeply from within that you think that I've got nowhere else to go. But then it, that is made up of a, load, a, lot, a lot of things as in Sangat, Gurbani, um, what you watch, what you put in your ears, your indriya, what are you doing with your spare time? Are you watching telly? Are you watching friends? I mean, I don't know what other programs are on the telly, but what are you doing in your spare time that's sitting in your subconscious mind? You know, what are you talking about in your spare time? Are you talking about your sisters? Such and such said this to me. What are you doing with your spare time? At work? When you're doing your gum and you're having a cup of tea, what, what are you doing during that time? Are you talking about the Guru? Are you talking about how you're going to improve your journey? Or are you talking about the nitty gritties of life? I'm in it too. I don't think that I'm talking down at you. Like I'm in it as well. And this is a reminder for me. But this is where you're going to find the answer. You can go anywhere. You can go to any bottom. Benji was saying, where's Benji? She went into Islam for eight years. I've come on from a Hindu background. And I tried it. Suman, my sister, she tried it. And we didn't find the answers either. But as soon as I turned to the Guru, there was some comfort. There was like my anxiety that I was experiencing at that time. And I still do get anxious. But that, that deep anxiety that I was feeling, it, it's, it's gone. It's no longer there. Because why? I've got the perfect Guru. No doubt about it. He will move mountains for me at his time, at his pace, and I'm just going to have the faith that he's going to do it. So this is where you're going to find the answers. And what does Guruji teach us? This is what they teach us. 
कवन सो अखर कवन गुण कवन सो मनिया मन सो गुरु जी सेइंग व्हाट इज दैट एजुकेशन व्हाट इज दैट वर्ड व्हाट इज दैट एजुकेशन व्हाट इज दैट वर्चू दैट मैजिक मंत्रा दैट दैट मंत्र व्हाट डू वी नीड हाउ आर वी गोना हाउ आर वी गोना अबटेन दैट हाउ आर वी गोना प्लीज आवर वाइग्रु if you take an example of a relationship for example for those that are married for those that have been in relationships or for those that have been in love with whoever if you think about it when you were at that point where you're madly in love what were you trying to do at that time how were you trying to please your partner you know did you dress a certain way do you know that they liked Oh, they like such and such movie. Oh, they like such and such food. Or this is how he likes my makeup. What, what, what did he like? What did you do to please him? You know, think about them virtues that that you originally were into when you're in a relationship. You know, you would go miles to please your partner when you're first in a relationship. I remember what it was like. You know, it's like walking on cloud nine. You know, and. you know if you asked me back then what am i willing to do i'd give my life for him i would i'd, I'd give my life for him you know and that's what we where we need to be is we're ready to lay down our head for our guru but then guru ji says that this is what is pleasing to him him nivan so akhar khavan gun jehba maniya mant so we're talking about humility here forgiveness if we talk about by taru singh again how humble must he have been to serve when people that came to arrest him that's that's pure humility you know forgiveness how often do we have a fight with one of our sisters or our parents and we think you know what i'm not going to forgive that because it's my right to be stern with what i believe how many times do we make mistakes and then we come to the guru and says guru ji maaf kar do and they forgive us you know recently i can give you an example one of my sisters came to me and they said i'm not happy with such and such and i was like i'm really sorry i didn't mean to hurt you it wasn't my intention but now that i know i'll be careful next time and she said this has been going on for the last 7 years benji and i went Why is it taking you so long to talk to me now? Like why have you let this and she said it's been building up and it was this and it was this and it's this. And like and you've been holding that in your mind for me about that all these years. She's not moved on and I've said Benji forget me. You need to think about your own self. What have you been doing to yourself holding that 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 hatred that eat car like i'll get over it i'll be fine but you need to figure out a way where you're not going to hurt yourself cuz ultimately you're number one when we don't forgive we do it to ourselves we're not doing it to the other person yeah there's all that energy transferable energy and all of that that separate but when we're not forgiving we're actually torturing ourselves we're we're collecting talak with not being able to forgive think about it what am i going to say what what words are coming out my mouth is it going to hurt them is it going to hurt me if it will hurt them they may not forget it and then i thought i'm going to do this and i want you to think about these like compassion if you take compassion for example guruji says tol param daya ka poot the whole world the whole universe is actually being bound by compassion that's what it works on we're walking on compassion and if you think about it to the moms here your natural compassion when your child is ill what do you do you you don't think about yourself you think about your child you know there's that really old story that you've heard that you know back in the days which the nyana pshab ka danda se bed pe the mother would pick up the child and move the, the child to the other place and sleep on the wet jagah themselves and we as women have naturally been given compassion naturally it doesn't come naturally to men you know you know they force them to say tenu pata nahi hone khana hai tenu pata nahi hone pehle jana hai 
ਤੈਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹ ਪਾਣੀ ਪੀਣਾ ਆ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਐਸ ਵੀਵ ਨੈਚਰਲੀ ਬੀਨ ਗਿਵਨ ਥੈਟ ਵਰਚੂ ਬਟ ਓਲ ਇਟ ਇਸ ਸਮ ਆਫ ਅਸ ਹੈਵ ਗਟ ਇਟ ਕਵਰਡ ਅਪ ਅ ਲਿਟਲ ਬਿਟ ਐਂਡ ਥੈਨ ਸਮ ਆਫ ਅਸ ਹੈਵ ਲੈਟ ਇਟ ਆਊਟ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਵੀਵ ਨੈਚਰਲੀ ਗਟ ਇਟ ਥੇਰ ਮੋਰ ਸੋ ਥੈਨ ਮੈਨ ਵੀਵ ਗਟ ਇਟ ਇਨ ਅਸ ਟੂ ਬਿਕਮ ਦ ਮੂਰਤੀ ਆਫ ਕੰਪੈਸ਼ਨ ਨਾਊਡੇਜ਼ ਯੂ ਸੀ ਦ ਪੈਰੈਂਟਸ ਸੇ ਦ ਅਮ ਕਾਸ਼ ਮੇਰੇ ਕੁੜੀ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਬਿਕਾਜ਼ ਮੈਨ ਵਾਟ ਡੂ ਦੇ ਡੂ ਆਮ ਇਨ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ ਮੈਨ ਮੂਵ ਆਊਟ ਦੇ ਗੈਟ ਮੈਰਿਡ ਐਂਡ ਦੇ ਮੂਵ ਆਊਟ what do the daughters continue to do mama are you okay do you need anything that's the virtue of a woman and i need you lot to realize how beautiful it is to be a woman if somebody said to me would you rather be a man or a woman men get to do such and such and such and i would say you know what never i would never change it i am so satisfied with being a bibi why because they can't carry children they cannot endure that pain that we go through and oh my god it is painful <laughs> yeah, and they couldn't do that we've been given milk nurturing we've been given the the ability to nurture to feed our child once it's born no man could do that you know guru ji has given us milk how great are you that you're able to do that and ultimately you need to love yourselves you need to love who you are you need to really really think you know what i am great because my guru's made me i'm not talking about pride here i'm talking about loving yourself and once you are able to love yourselves you'll be able to then get dish that out you'll be able to give compassion be humble be humble speak nicely to each other because then you'll see that sub major jo tesoi you'll see that and um, tolerance is a big one i i actually am really rubbish at that and i need to work on that so how much do we tolerate our partner or if somebody's made a mess or if somebody's not cleaned the bathroom after they've had a shower and how much does it irritate us when somebody comes over and they leave the dishes or you know the really little things that actually don't mean anything now penji also spoke yesterday about the woman being the central part of any household i really believe that and that's why we've naturally been given the role to look after our children and do the kam kaj obviously now it's changed and we work because we need to um pay the bills we want our own properties we don't want to live with our in-laws anymore we've created a situation if you naturally look at the virtues of the bibbi they were to hold the house together back in the day we did live with like our husbands brothers and their brothers and their cousins and all the children remained together why because they had tolerance they had the ability to tolerate each other we we don't have that anymore some of us do more so than others but we struggle with that because then i the want i the need i need this i need that and um the ultimate for me when i was thinking about this was love jin prem ki hote hain prab payo and if you fall in love with your guru you won't need anything else for me that was the core because it, again when i you refer back to being in love with a partner when you fall in love nothing else you go blind pagal ho gaya that's what they say in it pagal ho gaya and and the jadu tuna ka adat pa kisi ne my mom said that to me and it did job do it you know because i couldn't see anything but him so a lot of you will know that he's a writer um he was the eldest of three brothers he was born in india in amritsar and he was an inspiration to poetry he wrote books if you watch sundri anybody watch sundri the animation so he wrote that so by the thing um in their childhood um from very young age they they their nanna ji um from the day they were born actually would sit up with them and they would do their nitnam banya with them and um and that was every single day they if you read their their book it says that kadi vi vidni pyasaga and you know they never told that like you know with our children that 
you know, they'd wet themselves or they'd do all, none of that. They said that during the morning hours, they were just really quiet, content. They'd listen to the Bani and they were just in a completely different place. So that's a little bit about their character as a child. And as they were growing up, um, there's a story that um, one of their friends became quite ill. And he took um, a couple of months off school. And when he came back to school, Bhaiviji Singh said to him that, um, and one way to build up your strength is to drink milk every day. And their friend took that upon themselves. And, and I don't know if you know India, but like, like a little jari bagan or bagan or whatever. So opposite the school, they, the little, their friend made an agreement that I'm going to take a bit of milk from you every day. So over the period of about two months, he put on strength back, he put on a bit of weight, um, and he was, he was well again. But Jira Paisiga, the man from the shop, he wanted his money. So he started, like, Look, you've been drinking from my shop for two months now, I want my money. And I recently saw this from a far distance, knew what was going on. And the way they write it in the story, that they, all, they almost took it upon themselves that it was happening to them. That they had the same pain, they, he's got no money, he's from a grieve house. Um, how is he going to really pay for this milk that he's been drinking for two months? And they thought, what, what do I do? Like, obviously, I don't want to hang my parents. I don't want to go back to my mom and dad because we're not, we're not entirely well off. Um, so what do I do? My pocket money, I'm drawing it, but I, I catch it on food, barney, whatever it may be. Um, so then, and, and I thought this was really key because a lot of us say that we should only do ardas for Nam, for Guruji's love. But the twist on it here is that he actually thought in his mind and he said, Hey Guru Nanak Dev Ji, Hey Guru Gobind Singh Ji, show me a way of helping my friend. He's in need at the moment. He's in crisis. They haven't got no money. And for him to be well, he needed that milk. Show me a way of helping my friend. And he did that advice for his friend. And to me, it was great because how often do we do advice for anyone but ourselves? Really? If somebody if somebody came to me, they must have asked God there. You do it yourself. You know, it's your advice, you do it. But Bai V Singh did it for his friend. So then the following day, they were walking through the park and there was a busy park, lots of people running through and playing and whatever, and they saw something shining from this corner of their eye on the floor. And when they went up to it, they saw that it was a sikka enough money, the exact amount of money that they needed to pay off for the milk. But without it entering their mind, they just said, Jackie said, dig hoga. Somebody's must have fallen out the pocket, Gwini. Whoever it is, they'll realize and they'll come back and they'll pick it up. So they carried on, went to school, carried on. Second day came. Then very busy park and they saw it again and said, Jal, Queenie, maybe they've not realized yet, carried on. Third day came, and the sikka was still there. And at that point, they stopped. And then they contemplated. So they thought with their mind, and they settled with their mind, and then they were at peace. So they left it. And we can use that in our own journeys. You know, when we're having that debate, the inner voice, the Guruji is talking to us, and, oh, no, shall I remove my case? Oh, my upper lips looks really hairy, and... I don't know what to do. And we have that debate, but what do we do? We tell it to shut up. We don't want to hear it. But then the difference is, are we at peace? No. Because if it was the right decision, you would be at peace with it. It wouldn't come up again. And they were contemplating on, is it right? But then they remembered, I did their das. I said, you find me a way to help my friend. And they said, it's been three days. There's so many people here. And eventually, it felt right to them to pick up the money. And they went and paid off the man at the shop. And they said to the man, don't bang my friend now. 
leave him alone. And that, to me, it, it blew my mind away because I thought, like, he about seven or eight years old. But that's quite young. Really young. You didn't think I'd keep it for myself and I'll go and buy some sweets with it. Or, you know, he, he, he wanted to help his friend. But I always believe that behind a great man is a great woman. Behind my husband is me. <laughs> <laughs> so their mother was Mata Uttam God. She's amazing and we should really try and be like her. I mean, I would love to be like her. But um, she was married to Dr. Um, Jaran Singh, which is obviously Bhavi Singh's father. Um, she was a housewife. And everybody described her to be calm, a little bit like Mata Kiviji, very calming, very sweetly spoken. She cooked for everybody, everybody. Whoever came through the door, she cooked for them. She never wanted anybody to go empty. And even the Bibya, they're right in the story that even the, like the neighbors, the Bibya, say if she'd go back to her, to her mom's, they'd be like, why is she going? When is she going to come back? And they'd get really like un unsettled because she was leaving. And then when it was time three days later, they would um, say again, oh, Mataji's going to be back soon. And they'd like wait for her, like you would wait for a king almost, like, you know, Mataji's coming, you know. And she had that presence. But um, I want to I, I wanna tell you her story, but I want to read it to you, if that's okay. I do know it. But it, I, I won't do justice to it. So I'm going to read it to you. And forgive me because my Punjabi reading is not great. So there's two stories I want to share with you. Um, the first one is um, Bali Sahib. They were, uh, they were going on a, a suffer, uh, a travel through a train. So a man came and they sat in front of Avi Singh Ji. So they spoke about Guruji. They exchanged some sweet words. They spoke about stories of love. After a bit, they said, come on, why don't we eat together? I've got some food. Let me share my food with you. And the man said, Bahut acha. Thik ya. Okay, I'll share your food with you. So they gave him some bronte with some sabji and they had some themselves as well. He said, I want to I wanna say something that you may not like, but if you don't mind, I'll, I want to I wanna say something. So they're like, yeah, yeah, go ahead, no problem. Ask, tell me, who made these bronte? Tell me the truth. I, these things said, why do you have doubt? Like, is there something wrong with the bronte? Why do you feel like that? So I said, I've got no doubt, but it's really tasty. And this is like a pleasure. So they said, I've got some pleasure from eating this bronte with sabji. I can feel that a mother has made this. There's the, 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 the love of a mother in this prashadda, and I can feel it. So he said, if I'm not wrong, your mother's made these bronte. <coughs> the padri, the, the man that was eating the bronte, he filled up, and his heart welled up. And he said, 17 years later, he said, I've eaten a mother's roti. 17 years ago, my mom passed away, and today I felt the mother's love through your roti. But he went on to say that, that nowadays, Bibian don't make fulka in the same piyar that my mother made it. And when I was reading this, it took me back to when I got married. When we were on honeymoon, so it's probably the third week into our marriage, we were sitting in Maldives. And I was, I was having a cup of tea and I got really upset, and he was like, what's your problem, man? When honeymoon, and why are you crying? <laughs> and no lie, I cried for about an hour, because I missed my mum so much. And I said, I need to speak to my mum, I miss her. And someone knows, I used to go and sit on my mum's lap, even at the age of 22, before we got married. And I would be like, look how big you are, why are you sitting on your mum's lap for? Why? Because, because a mother is the murti of Pyar. And everybody can relate to that. 
I'm sure you can, whether your mother, whether your daughter, whatever. You must have some point in your life where you think that my mum is great. That was their mother. Imagine that. You've, you've given your prashadha to somebody and they've said, man, I can taste the pyar in this prashadha. But that's what Mata Uttam Kaur was. They were a great being. And then there's another story. Take your mind into a village setting. Take your mind into a home where Mataji and Dr. Sahib would be living back um, how many of the years ago. And yeah, the other thing is they were 14, 15 years old when they got married. It's really young. Really, really young. Yeah. So take, take your minds back to that time. So nowadays we would say, oh yeah, let's get one sing together and let's call them prashadda. So that's what they would do, but it was regular there. So sadhua, saints, they would regularly call them over and give prashadda to them, and Mataji would cook. And you would read in the, um, these stories that when they did make food, they were constantly doing simran. They were constantly singing gurbani. That's all that, that Mataji would do. So this is what they're doing. They're making the prashad, they're making the sabji, and they're singing the praises of Vaidhu at the same time. So all the sadhus have now come from their deity. So they set out their towels, got the sadhus to sit down, got their hands washed. And then they saw that there was another two sadhus lurking around outside. They weren't called, but when they saw that they were there, they said, So they fed them, and they've all gone. They've all gone home. So you know the two sadhus that came at the end? One of them turned up again, and started calling. That I'm here again for some prashadda. I don't know if you know, but back in the day, if somebody came, you'd just give them like some sukkah, atta, sukkah, rice, and you'll say, here, get on your bike and go. So that's what Mataji tried to do, <laughs> to say, here, take some of this. And he said, I want prashad, I want your prashadda. So yesterday you called me, but today I've come myself, I want your prashadda. Now put yourself in that situation. Somebody's t turned up, I want some food, man. But you're like, but I got the washing machine to put on, and I got to get ready, and I I got to get get out, and I need to go shopping, or I'm watching telly. <laughs> That's what we would do, wouldn't we? Or here's the this is what I do. There's the fridge. There's the cupboard. <laughs> um, help yourself. <laughs> but she said, "No, ji So he's saying, "I want longer to continue to be on." In, in, in this way. So he's saying, I want your house to be full of money. I want money to come into this house. Santaji, e na karna. Don't do that. Money is dirty and it's going to take me away from Rob. If you're really happy with me, do a das for me that I remember my guru all the time. There's never a moment that I don't forget him. So now he's fallen at Mataji's feet. He's saying, forgive me. I actually still didn't realize who you were and what avastha you're at and the pain that you've got for Guru Sahib. So he's saying, what can I give to you? So instead, he's asking her for now. So he's saying, you, you, you do a das for me that I am in the same state of mind that you're in. So that's by Veer Singh's mother. Great lady. And from that, I took loads away. Because for those that know, we have a lot of foot in our house. And I would love to be like her, you know, to serve and to feed um, people in the same way that she did. So that when they leave, that they are in that same way. Oh, I can't do that, but we can always hope. What do we ask for? A car, some shoes, a job. Good degree, good partner, tick box. We were talking about that yesterday, weren't we? Tick box. What type of the star does he wear? Is his beard too long? Or too short? So what do we ask for in our partner? But her ultimate was, gay. I don't want to be separated from you. About two weeks ago, I had a message from one of my sisters to say, well, who's your role model then? And it got the thought process going in my brain. And I thought, my mom's my role model. She's not Sikh. She cuts her hair. But she is strength, pure strength. I thank her greatly from the bottom of my heart. Because if it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be who I am now. 
ਅੰਨਾ ਦੁੱਖ ਵੀ ਬੋਧ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਸੋ ਦੈਨ ਵਨ ਆਸ ਥਿੰਕਿੰਗ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਥਿਸ ਸੁਤ ਅਪਰਾਧ ਕਰਤ ਹੈ ਜੇਤੇ ਜੰਮੀ ਚੀਤ ਨਾ ਰਾਖਸ ਚੇਤੇ ਜੇਤੇ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਜੀ ਥਾਉ ਯੂ ਥਿਸ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਟੂ ਮੀ ਮੈਨੂੰ ਇੰਦਰਾ ਨੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਦੁੱਖ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਸੇ ਦ ਆ ਵਾਸ ਦ ਵਰਸਟ ਚਾਈਲਡ ਬਟ ਆ ਡ ਗੋਟ ਸੇ ਸ਼ੀ ਗੇਵ ਮੀ ਦ ਮੋਸ ਲਵ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ I was off the rails and some of you must know already that yeah I was a really bad teenager and sometimes she'd lock the door early hours in the morning for cuz I, I couldn't get back in and then I'd be like mommy door could no I found out so please somebody open the door and she would she'd forgive me and she'd let me in and then I picked my own partner and it was like the worst thing in the world bagwala ne choose kar liya ki koge sari duniya ki koge Yes she's attached to me but she loved me enough to let me go to say okay if this is what's going to make you happy then do it and then I took Amrit and she almost fainted and she's like oh my god because <laughs> I used to wear a lot of jewelry a lot of jewelry like the knot the hand pieces and I remember one day she came over and I said um, mom I'm no longer going to wear this stuff and she's like gee and she then actually came again to do a sauce <laughs> <laughs> and she said me the kuri ki thi these like would say why are you always doing everything for her you know she tells you she's like the worst kid she's like bad apple they used to call me and why are you doing this why because she loves me so she's taught me to be courageful she's taught me to have strength and she's taught me to forgive and a lot of the virtues that are embedded within, within me have come from my mom so she's my insp- and i want you to think about that because we all as women think about it's got to be a seek baby it's she's got to be this no it doesn't have to be a seek you take whatever virtue you can from anywhere it can only go to to put a nail there to pull it no so reflect on that and and if you don't spend enough time with your mom take this opportunity to do that and then because i was thinking about this and i was thinking about if we really talking about prem and we're talking about the virtues and we're talking about <coughs> what it really means to sacrifice yourself then it's this jo to prem khelan ka chao sir tar tali gali meri aao so that's what guruji says don't they is that if you actually want to play the game of love with me put your head on your palm and come and play this game with me and to me that's ultimate sacrifice you're probably going to say that i keep going on about this but to me it's really important it's a really important to me because it shows your acceptance with the way rubs made you this is nature this is nature jo to prem kalan ka chao sirf to tali gali mrio and if you want to accept nature then you need to accept the way rubs made you you need to love yourself that's the only way you're going to be able to love maharaj and i know that we're all on our journey and some people will go and they'll we took him at this yesterday that we'll go around the roundabout or we'll take a turn and eventually we'll get back on the path again we're all on our journey but what's very um dangerous is when you're stagnant when you're not moving that's when you're in danger zone when you've been here and you keep going round round and round round circles that's when you really need to think about what am i doing what changes am i making because you hold a very great responsibility as being a woman you are leaders without knowing it you're leading the next generation the first teacher for any child is their mother my mother taught me and i'm teaching my children and i may get it wrong but be conscious about what you're doing you hold a great responsibility on your shoulders and this is key here is sir dije ta na kije i do be care what your boss is going to say or what your friend at work is going to say or why why do you care so much you're going to give your head to your boss is he going to go with you when you have your last breath no nobody's going to go with you and it's okay if you're actually satisfied i'm all right like this I actually am all right living this life and it doesn't bother me. That's fine. But if you've got guilt, then you know there's a problem and then that's when you need to do something about it. I'm not telling nobody what to do. 
your life, you see your mind, you go, but if you have got guilt, then you know that you need to make a change for the better. Because this isn't a given, this life. It's not a given, not everybody gets this opportunity. But now is your time, it's your turn now to make a difference, to make a difference to you, to your family, to your children, to other people around you. Now's your time. But then I thought about this. I was thinking about makeup and I was thinking about how we decorate our bodies and like really, like because we want to look a certain way. I was thinking, well, actually, what is the decoration we need to give our body? Is it mascara? Is it lipstick? You know, what, what is it? And it's, it's, it's the fear of Rob is watching it every action. Now, sometimes they say that um, I can look forward, I can look backwards, but you can't hide nothing from me. You can lie to the world, you can lie to the world, I can lie to the world, I can stand here and say blah, 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 but really, Rob knows, he knows everything. And it's the fear, that this the mascara of fear that we need to have. And the shingar, again, we'll come back to the love again. You know, we, we decorate our bodies with bangles and rings and jewellery and we think, yeah, man, it's hip. But that's, that's not going to please Waigro. He's after praying. He's after your sacrifice. But the notion is that it's love and use each other to be on your path. But don't remain stagnant. <coughs> You know, and when you are, be open to criticism. So if somebody, one of your sisters said to you, says to you, Benji, like, come on, man. Don't be like, yeah, yeah, but, you know, I'm on my own path. Don't put your guard up. That's the worst thing that you can do. I do it. Be accepting. Sacrifice. You've got to sacrifice yourself. Seva hoe karten hekam. you got to do it nishkam karke. you got to do your seva. Looking after your children is seva. Don't actually think that just doing the jar side or, you know, washing the pundit, that is seva. But that all practical seva is so that when you go out in the world, you're able to do, you're able to practice it there. I mean, one of the Benji said, Benji at the back said yesterday that I'm all right here amongst my sisters, but it's out when I'm out in the world. But that's when you're tested. That's when you sit your exam. So this is all revision and you're prepping. And that's when you're going to sit your exam. So use this time. Do keep them together. Praise Wai Guru. And love each other. Wai Guru Ji Ka Ka Sa. Wai Guru Ji Ka If you enjoyed this video, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Please donate and help spread Guru Ji's message. Link is in the description below. Wai Guru Ji Ka Ka Sa. Wai Guru Ji Ki Fateh. Wai Guru Ji Ka Ka Sa.